Today we're going to talk about how do you know if your bearded dragon is sick. One of the big things is lethargy. This is when a bearded dragon is acting tired and isn't really moving much and is sort of like down and maybe he's got his eyes closed and he's not moving much overall very lethargic now this can be a massive indicator that something is wrong with your bearded dragon but at other times of the year that's perfectly normal behavior so you need to know what time of year it is to make context with what's happening in front of you for example going into winter bearded dragons are known to hibernate so that morose behavior of sleeping down and being lethargic and not really moving much and sleeping for long periods of time that's typical hibernation behavior conversely in the summer bearded dragons estivate that's when the air temperatures are really high and in the wild they would actually seek shelter to try and limit how hot they'd get so that it wouldn't make their metabolism go too high because prey availability in the summer is very low so they would manage that by estivating and in captivity when it's hot outside and they can tell that the weather is summertime they'll start estivating. Estivation does look very different from hibernation in the fact they're not really sleeping in the same way they would in hibernation. They will be very lethargic and inactive at times. They might sit on the same shelf or branch for weeks at a time. But the key difference here is they are active and alert. If you were to open a door they would be alert and they would look at you. It's not the same as slumped over, eyes shut, asleep they would be sat there sort of like groggy maybe maybe half sort of like this but, but, but if you were to do something they would go so they're still active and alert but not running around so if in the summer your bearded dragon is lying there with his eyes shut and his mouth slightly ajar or something and he looks a bit off that might be an indication of illness and you might want to check that out if this happens in the spring then definitely something's up because they should be active at this point Maybe like March time, they're still a little bit groggy because they're just coming up from winter. But if you're in the midst of like now, which is what, April going into May, if they're acting like that at that point in time, something's definitely off. If their mouth is gaping and they're not in a thermoregulation sense, when they gape when they're thermoregulating, normally it's because they want to stay in a basking position because in the wild, they would have competition from other dragons for this prime basking spot, but also this survey spot. So they'll sit in this survey spot and even though they're getting really, really hot, they'll stay there because it's advantageous to stay there. So what they would do is behaviorally thermoregulate by gaping and allowing cool air to pass as they breathe. Now you can see this behavior in the shaded cool end of your enclosure if the air temperatures in the enclosure are getting too high. So you want to make sure that you're checking the air temperatures, making sure that it's within safe bounds. And if it is and they're lying there and their mouth is open and they shouldn't be because it's not too hot in there, that might be an indicator that something's off of your dragon. Also, whilst that mouth is open, have a good look. Do they have strands of saliva? Is it gloopy? Does it look off? Is their mouth discolored? Do they normally have a really pink, healthy looking mouth? But for some reason, your dragon's mouth is now like really yellow. They might look a bit jaundice. Are they struggling to breathe? Can you hear them gasping? Do they have discharge from their mouth or nose? Do they have a runny nose? All of these things together could be indicative of a respiratory infection in your bearded dragon. There are other elements of the mouth that doesn't necessarily include being ill in the sense that we see it as like illness and viruses and disease. They can just have a lot of plaque on their teeth. Look at your bearded dragon's teeth. Are you feeding too much fruit? Are you feeding fruit at all these bitter dragons don't have sets of teeth that renew like we do they have something called an acrodont tooth meaning they have a serrated jaw and if they get plaque and cavities build up on that jaw once they lose that it's gone so you can see this gunk and plaque growing on their jawbone that can cause illness they can start to get mouth rot and other things like that you want to make sure that their mouth is healthy and clean look at your bearded dragon's eyes are they sunken in do they look really sunken compared to the rest of the head does the skin look really tight to the skull whilst they're sunken in eyes there that may be indicative that they're dehydrated and that is one of the few times that i would say actually give it a bit of a bath and you can get water and drip it on their heads try and hydrate them a little bit this might also be caused by really high air temperatures so make sure that their cool end is cool because some people don't realize and they basically got their bearded dragon in a bloody oven so they will dehydrate they're not immune to dehydration they are arid adapted it doesn't mean that they will go on forever there will be a point where it's just too hot and they will start to suffer now on the opposite end of the spectrum are their eyes swollen this can be indicative of something's wrong like infections but if it's happening during the time of shedding or they're just coming up to shedding, then that's a little bit different because bearded dragons will eye bulge. 
So that allows them to stretch and loosen that skin, getting ready for shedding. So outside of shedding periods, that might be a bit weird. So during shedding, I wouldn't be too concerned, but outside of shedding, I would note that as a point of concern and keep an eye on that. Speaking of swollen eyes and swelling in general, do they have swollen limbs? Do they have swelling in any part of their body? If you have a swelling in limbs or even the throat, that can be indicative of gout. Now, gout can be caused by too much protein in the diet, causing these massive parts of their body to grow. You do see bearded dragons with massive swollen forearms and big ass bulky beards where the gout is just taking over and that bearded dragon is likely in pain. Is your bearded dragon losing weight? What you should be doing is once a week, just Weigh your bearded dragon, take a note of the total weight of your dragon and make sure you're recording that somewhere so you can refer to that later on. If your dragon is rapidly losing weight at more than 10% of their total body weight, so let's say that your bearded dragon was 200 grams and it suddenly lost more than 20 grams in a rapid succession, then I would worry and get it to a bit. Another one can be a lack of interest in food. Now I have to give this a big caveat here because certain times a year, that's totally normal. Again, like hibernation, a lack of interest in food, perfectly normal. In the summer, if they're going in estivation and they're going off food, that might be normal for your bearded dragon as well. Again, you need to know the individual dragon as well because they will have certain behaviors that they will display at different times a year. If you have a female dragon that is egg laying or looks like they're starting to scratch and look for nest sites, then they might go off food as well. So you need to know how you can link things to certain behaviours that are normal or typical outside of illness. But if you figure out that they're going off food outside of these sort of situations, keep an eye on that. One of the things that can cause this lack of interest in food and lethargy at strange parts of the year is an overburden of parasites. Now bearded dragons do have parasites that co-evolve with them. Pinworms are one of those that did co-evolve with bearded dragons. It's thought they're meant to be in the gut to rotate and churn that food bolus. So it helps the bearded dragons actually digest their food. There are some more aggressive parasites that can cause a lot of problems. So you're going to want to consult with your veterinarian. I am not a veterinarian. If bearded dragons go through a point of stress, which causes their immune system to plummet and they go through a bit of immune suppression, that's when an overpopulation of pinworm and parasites in general can snowball and, and overwhelm your bearded dragon's immune system. A good thing to do throughout the year is do parasitology tests. You can get these kits online. They simply send you a kit, a little plastic vial or tub. You put the poop of your dragon in there, you send it back in the mail, and I'll tell you what parasites your dragon has. There's a link in the description. I will link that for you. Use that through most of the year if you can. Another thing that's related to parasites is stool. Parasites can make the stool look really weird or make it absolutely stink. We all know that the smell of bearded dragon stool does smell, but sometimes when they're ill, you can walk in and be like, Gah! it absolutely is rank and you know that you smell ill. And that comes down to knowing the smell of your own bit of dragon. Weird, but true. That stool also might be off colour. Is it unusually red or yellow? Does it have blood in it? If it's outside the typical brown stool with that urate attached to it and it doesn't look healthy, keep an eye on that as well. Also, the consistency of the stool. If it's compact, but it's in a nice mucus package with a attached urate, that's really healthy. It's not supposed to be really dry and brittle and strained to get it out, and it's supposed to have urates with it. If there's a lack of urates for a long period of time, that can be indicative of dehydration, so keep an eye on that as well. On the flip side, if your bearded dragon's producing just a mass amount of water or just loose stools and diarrhea, that could be indicative of something going wrong as well. Again, if you're feeding them the foods that are really high in water, like if you keep feeding them butternut squash, which I don't, but people do, that can cause diarrhea on repeats. So keep an eye on what you're actually feeding them. If your bearded dragon is actually prolapsed, you want to make sure that they've got a nice clean vent that's actually closed. If the cloaca is like protruding or open, then I might be a bit of a concern, especially if it's over the long term. So if it's prolapsed, then you want to go to a vet as well. If your bearded dragon does want to be active, but it is moving weird, like it's dragging its hind legs and only moving the front ones, that can mean indicative of a gastrointestinal blockage. So that is one that you want to go to the vet for straight away. If the animal appears weak in general and it's just not moving right and it can't walk properly, 
and it's dragging certain limbs, you want to get that checked out. Lastly, if your bearded dragon is starting to get a weird shaped head or its legs starting to move a bit weird and its bones are looking weird, that can be a sign of metabolic bone disease. That's where they've not got enough calcium in their diet and there's probably more phosphorus than calcium in the blood and they've caused them to draw bone calcium storage out into the blood to maintain homeostasis. If that continues over a long period of time, the bones can become brittle and weak and bendy or even fracture. This is where you see bitter dragons with absolutely messed up jaws or like humps in their back or spiraling legs or tails or legs that are stuck behind like this. Get to a vet, please. The biggest thing that I can say in this whole video is use your vet. None of these things online that it's like tips and tricks to DIY fix this, just go to the vet. If you want to learn how to best look after your bearded dragon so your bearded dragon doesn't get sick often and it doesn't lead to massive medical bills, then you should watch this video right here. I teach you how to look after bearded dragons in the best way possible.